Hello everyone, my name is Mohibul Hassan and I'm going to show you how to download, install and config Veeam, the agentless backup solution for virtual machines. To download a trial version of Veeam, you can log on to veeam.com. As you can see, the version 8 is out now, but I'll show you an earlier version, version 6. Veeam can be installed to take Hyper-V backups and also VMware-based uh, virtual machine backups and you don't have to have a Windows Server to install Veeam, it can be installed on Windows 7. You can obtain a free copy, uh, not quite free, um, the demo copy of the backup and replication software. There's a free version which is called Veeam Zip which is completely free to use and uh, what it does, you should be able to manually take a um, backup of your virtual machine but you can't schedule a backup to run every day that's the only difference, but you should be able to take a full backup as you can see these versions, Veeam Backup Free Edition for VMware and Hyper-V um, it will support both, it can in fact include the Hyper-V and VMware virtual machines to the same instance of the software I have already downloaded and installed a copy of Vim. I'll show you how it works. The installation process is pretty stra straightforward. You download and click next, provide some information. And during the installation process, you do not need to specify a Hyper-V or VMware host. Now I'll, I'll take you to the, to the console. This is what it looks like. You've got quite a few options here. And this is the infrastructure pool. So you have Microsoft Hyper-V and VMware vSphere. Like I said, you can include Hyper-V machines and also VMware machines to the same system. You don't have to have a separate install for the other system. Now that way, it should you should um, plan these. I haven't virtualized the Veeam server. It could, it could still do that, but I just didn't want to rely on the virtual infrastructure if something went wrong. The Veeam software, the beauty of it, it, it doesn't have an agent, which means if a machine is down, you do not need to have the agent back. And also sometimes if um, the software relies on an agent, and if the agent is gone completely, there are some complications. But this one, once the server is backed up, everything is there. Now the way this system was set up is, sorry it's taking a bit of time to uh, expand the node. Okay, right, as you can see I have added two hosts, one is, version, uh, one is number 3 and 10. Now these two physical hosts are hosting multiple virtual machines and each host has its own storage, so dedicated completely separate from each other and the way I have designed it, so the virtual machine stored on version 3, as you can see I'll show you both, so this is one host and this is the other one, as you can see this the um, 192.168.11.3 host, physical host, physical machine is hosting only one production server which is mail as you can see and you'll also see some replica so database server, file server, primary DC these servers actually are these are actually these three servers are actually production servers hosted on the other host this is the other host as you can see database server is actually running on this server file server is running primary DC is running and, and we have only two um, as you can see only two Sleeping virtual machines, mail, replica, and this is an old one, um, can be deleted. Um, so it's, as you can see, what we're doing actually here, the virtual machines running on this server will be backed up onto the other host, this one, and the virtual machines running on this server, on this host, are being backed up onto the other one. So in, term, in terms of if, if there's a catastrophic disaster, 
um, we could still uh, run these virtual machines and these will have the exact same copy depending on when you take the backup. I'll show you how to set up a new backup uh, and um, how often you, you take the backups to prevent any data loss. Now this set setup um, has been, this is, we have set it up in a way so it will only take one um, backup every evening so if during the day if something goes wrong we should still be able to run the virtual machines and it will it will keep uh, only a few um, virtual machine um, image restore points which means it can go back up to three days I mean this system is set up for disaster recovery bare metal backup uh, and uh, this organization already has a file level backup so you don't really need to worry about those files if the server completely goes down you can still right click on the v VMware vSphere client and run it of this system and it will have the exact same copy the exact replica this is the exact replica of the database server um, and this is the exact replica of the file and primary now remember these server that are not running at the moment will have the exact same identity the same IP address the same host name so if the if the production server is running for instance database server you should not be in a suite you shouldn't switch on this server because there will be a bit of a conflict okay and these virtual machines do not really um, do not really know you know if the DC is running or not uh, they will launch and it's pretty much like a physical server if you had like to a clone of a physical machine if you switch it on and plug into the network there will be a bit of conflict okay right I will now demonstrate on how to create a new job so this is the uh, the VM infrastructure if you have Microsoft Hyper-V it will be quite similar you can right click add a server you can type in the DNS name, the host name, or the IP address of the server. I don't have any at the moment, so I'm not going to do that. You can click next, and it will ask for the credentials, the admin username for the um, for the system. Okay, now I will show you how to create a new job or um, the jobs that have been already added to the system. Okay, so you've got the um, the jobs and you've got the replicas. These are these are the virtual machines that are ready at the moment to run. You can just restore them anytime, and I'll show you how many restore points. For instance, these servers have only got only two restore points, uh, two days worth. You don't really need anything beyond that because if the server is down, the backup solution will stop taking backups, and if the serve the server operating system is corrupted, it will stop taking the backups. So You'll, you'll still have a fully functioning virtual machine to switch on. Last 24 hours, it will show. Now, under jobs, you can right click and you'll get all these different information. Now, just simply back up. If you choose this one, you should be able to set up a backup to store or save on, a, on an external hard drive or onto a local hard drive. You can do it that way. Replication will only replicate the existing server, it will it will find the changes, um, the change files and also applications and it will replicate. Um, it will pretty much like you take a snapshot of the current server and uh, store it doesn't really copy everything. Everything will be copied um, at the first run so when you first launch uh, run the backup job it will copy everything and then later on it will only um, check the the changes and copy over the files. VM copy, pretty much the same one. File copy, you can copy the files, but we, we don't really need to use this one because the organization should already have a file level backup solution. Right, replication is quite popular because you can store, you can copy or clone the existing virtual machines and save them onto a server where they will be actually mounted and ready to go. I'll show you how that works later on. Now I'll create a new replication job or actually I can edit one of these to show you how it works. Okay. So when you first launch this is what you get. Okay, click next. That's the virtual machine you want to back up. 
you can add another virtual machine. See, you have already added these um, virtual infrastructure, these two hosts. These are virtual hosts. In this case, these are actually um, VMware hosts, but in your case, you will probably need to add Hyper-V host. It will work pretty much the same way. You'll need to authenticate uh, by typing in the admin credentials. And once this software has access to, to the virtual host, all the virtual machines will be listed whether they're running or not. Click next. And also you can exclude. If you click exclusion, disks, you can choose which disks you'd like to include. In this case, um, the server is actually backing up all the hard drives. But in some cases, you'll have some additional hard drives that you'll never need to back up in a regular basis. For instance, this system will find the SCSI, um, the um, iSCSI based hard drives that you will, may not need to back up but if the iSCSI is the only hard drive target then you have to select all but you can also select the disks you want to back up now mind you um, it doesn't automatically pick up the, um, the virtual disk drives but you could do that if you want to back up a virtual disk drive it could be a USB disk drive, but by default it will only it will only select or, or tick the storage that um, are being used by the server. For instance, this server has got only two drives: uh, SCSI 0, 0 and SCSI 0, 1. Okay, and you could also use template if you had any. Click next. Now this is the host cluster destination. Like I said, um, I mentioned earlier, this system has got two hosts set up. Now, number three is the one that is hosting this mail virtual machine, mail. Number 10 is the other one that is hosting some other applications. We're hoping that two hosts will not uh, go down at the same time. Because if, if one is alive, then you should be able to launch the server. So we're actually going to save the virtual machine onto this one. now. As you can see, this host 10 has an iSCSI drive stored, which has got plenty of free space, 4.5 terabyte free, which means we can choose that data store. We have virtualized the, um, the data store as well. So as you can see, these are all the data stores. Data store 1, that's the native one. Um, file 3 NFS. That's actually on the NAS, which is uh, the unified storage. This is the beauty of QNAP. You can actually um, virtualize the storage, and you don't need to worry about running out of disk space. Um, so QNAP 1 terabyte free storage. So this is another native drive. And Vim to QNAP have um, created, mounted another virtual storage um, only for Vim. You know, it gives you a clear idea if this data store has anything rather than Vim backups so you know which one is um, native and which one isn't but you can, you can choose any one you want if you have um, storage um, if you have got enough uh, space to take a backup click next now this this page job settings now the data transfer this is the proxy automatically selected it will automatically select the host machine for the uh, vim backup solution this is the host machine, machine where the software is running. But you could actually add another proxy, another location within the network where all these temporary data will be stored during the transfer of data. Okay, and the capacity, free space, you, you can see um, you know, how much free space this one has got. This is the host machine, by the way. Free space is 527 gig, which is plenty and that's the total capacity so you don't need to have the same amount of storage as the the source data file because this is only a temporary uh, proxy but uh, it's, it's good to have more storage um, for faster tra transfer now we can add a prefix because you don't really want to have the virtual machine to be called exactly the same one so you get confused replica will be added to every virtual machine backed up but the host name this is not the host name the host name will still be mail or file whatever it was this is the identity 
of the virtual machine that you will see on the uh, Hyper-V host, uh, sorry, Hyper-V management console or the VMware vCenter client. Now the rest of the points to keep, if you have if you have you need to calculate how, how many restore points you can keep you can keep 16 you can keep 100 if you want depending on how much storage you have remaining on the data so in, in our case it is we have 4.5 terabytes free um, so we could have actually kept more but you don't necessarily need to keep more than two depending on your situation two restore points mean you can go back to two days in the in our case because we are only taking two days worth of backup there's an admin tab, admin button, compression. You can choose the level of compression you want, low, best, but uh, the optimal is recommended. You don't need to change anything. Now, the target, local target, the WAN target, it will be optimized uh, you know, based on the connectivity. You can replicate over the LAN, local target attached to the local machine, or the WAN target. Um, the internet so these are very important but normally it's LAN in this case notifications you can choose notifications if something goes wrong if this job fails the system will send you an email depend but you need to set up the SMTP settings on, on the system you need to give, give it SMTP um, credentials and server address and all these I don't normally change any of these uh, but if you want you can play with these post job activity, you can, run, you can run a script if you want. If you don't have to, don't do it. Click next. Now, this is important because um, you are actually, um, if you're backing up a database SQL server, it's very important that you tick this button enable application aware image processing. Uh, if you tick that, uh, the software will um, contact the application and tell the application that you are being backed up especially if you are backing up a SQL server this is very important and um, and because of transactional data it will um, it will clear the cache and when you restore or when you switch on this virtual machine it will not stop because SQL server comes up with many different issues if you do not tell the application that the database is being backed up so it updates the log now the the um, the database log um, should know that it's been backed up and this is the restore point and if you choose this app um, this option you need to provide with admin credentials so the system can access the application and uh, notify about the backup if you click next now this is the scheduling uh, this backup starts at six o'clock in the afternoon every day but you can choose monthly periodically every one hour depending on your situation uh, and your bandwidth local bandwidth and storage so you can actually keep two um, only two uh, restore points but you can take a backup every hour so if something goes wrong you can still restore the backup now depending on the processing speed and your other resources on the hard on the server um, if you can take a backup every hour it will put a lot of pressure on the local infrastructure but if you're taking every hour that means the system will not have many much like a large amount of data to back up so it's not too bad but if you run the backup at the end of the day uh, it could take up to a couple of hours depending on how much data you have stored on the local machine return the VM um, VMs processing three times if it fails uh, and wait 10 minutes before it attempts again in case if there's a networking issue now terminate a job if it exceeds an uh, allowed backup window you can specify uh, you don't really want to run this backup uh, during the day when the servers will be heavily used so you can stop that it could cause some issues if you if your um, processing most majority of processing speed is being used to um, to back up the systems click next and if you check everything and you could tick that box to run this backup immediately or you can leave it unticked and click finish this is how you create a backup replication job now the second one has been set up exactly the same way but because this is this is host 10 so the target is actually 3 this is host 3 
and the target as you can see is 10 so all the virtual machines are on two different hosts but because um, this is a production environment you do not want to put too much pressure on one host you're using two different physical hosts and uh, taking a clone of every virtual machine onto another one so in case if there is a hardware failure you can still switch on the virtual machine and as you can see these are the virtual machines ready if you want to restore the failover now you can do that restore guest file you can only um, restore a file rather than restoring the whole operating system restore guest file this is um, other OS it could be Linux or something and um, this is this is it actually. Uh, there's a restore button. If you high, if you click that one, it'll be given. It'll be given all these options. Instant VM recovery if it's completely failed, and you have the virtual machine uh, ready. But now, if you if you take if you uh, set up a replication job, that means the the virtual machines are mounted onto another host anyway. If you look at the infrastructure. This is the infrastructure, the VMware infrastructure. As you can see, the virtual machines are actually already mounted. All you need to do is just right click and run the application, uh, run the virtual machine. But if you take a virtual machine backup, you can still run the restore job, restore operation, instead of VM recovery entire VM recovery including registration so it, it includes everything VM hard disk if, if, you, if you find that one hard drive is failing so you can choose one particular hard drive rather than everything the entire operating system the VMDK so this is a good way actually you don't need to if you if you're um, if you're migrating um, a server from a Hyper-V to VMware or VMware to Hyper-V, you can restore files this way, so it will give you the VMDK or VMX files, so VMX is the latest one. Um, you can do it that way, the guest files, you can only uh, restore some files, so in a way this is actually uh, acting as a file level backup as well as application level backup. And other OS, it doesn't have to be Microsoft Windows, you can also uh, restore files of Linux or Mac OS server application items um, if you have to um, restore database files or something related to an application you can do it this way the failover to replica what this will do if it if the app if the virtual machine completely fails it will start recovering but will give you access to the virtual machine instantly which means it, it will be slightly slower than usual but if you have the host ready uh, we presume that the physical machine is not completely dead or we have a, a separate machine you can choose the fa this failover and uh, run this failover replica which what this will do it will run the uh, replicate the replica server so the user should be able to access all the components all these uh, files and applications on the server um, and at the same time it will start recovering the server it will start copying everything over to the new host and once that's done, it will automatically shut down the the replica server, and um, everyone will in, have instant access to the new server on the new hardware. Okay, so fallback production guest file windows. So these are to restore from replica, restore from backup. As you can see, we have set up the replication, so we will be using all these features. But if you have chosen to set up a backup, which we haven't done, the difference is this one will not be mounted. We will not have some virtual machines ready to right click and run in this case if you set up a restore from back I mean if you set up a backup job rather than a replica job replica job this is what I prefer um, for a busy environment you could do all this this is it um, um, anything else um, I don't I can't think of anything else uh, but if you have any queries you could always uh, send me a message um, and contact me um, if I could be of any further assistance. This one is not this tutorial. The software I have shown you is um, is actually 6.1, not version 8. But the latest one doesn't really have um, anything new, rather than the interface, because the interface is slightly different. Uh, but the principle is the same. 
it works the same way. You can include anything. You can include any sort of virtual machines. It could be Linux. It could be Windows. You can add Windows Hyper-V hosts. These are all the hosts. This this is the infrastructure pool. You can have VMware hosts, or you can Hyper-V hosts, and it will work exactly the same way. Well, thank you very much indeed for watching, and uh, good luck.